Guatemala throughout the 1960s to 1990s was dominated by violence and terror. Guerrilla warfare was common as rebels constantly tested the government with uprisings and killing sprees. To counter this, the government would go rampant with human rights abuses in attempts to cut off any rebel facilitators. I interviewed Vinny, a Guatemalan escapee who lived in the heart of the guerrilla attacks and government intervention during the 1980s and parts of the 1990s. He escaped and came to, Guana- uh, came to America 20 years ago, but vividly remembers his time in Guatemala. During my interview, Vinny highlighted that this created a lack of security in both worlds. He, as a farmer, whose priorities were his job and family, could not speak up against either the government or guerrilla groups, even though, in his mind, both were at fault. The government would be suspicious of his affiliation with known guerrilla groups, and the guerrilla groups would be disgusted with his apparent agreement with the government, even though he did not, he did not pledge allegiance to either group. Even though the guerrilla groups were technically fighting for people like Vinny, poverty-stricken farmers being abused by the government, Vinny and many others felt their tactics were too extreme and fighting the way they did would do nothing to change the situation at hand. Through the 1960s, the guerrilla warfare shifted from the countryside to Guatemala City. The majority of guerrilla attacks were now being centered in Guatemala City because that is where they found the most recognition and damage. At this time, four main guerrilla groups joined to create one incredibly powerful force, the Guerrilla Army of the Poor, EGP, the Revolutionary Organization of Armed People, ORPA, the Rebel Armed Forces, FAR, and the Guatemalan Labor Party, PGT, together conducted economic sabotage and targeted government installations. By 1970, the guerrilla movement had created widespread fear throughout the Guatemalan population and rise in anger from the government's end. The government was getting more and more frantic as the guerrilla movements persisted and civilians became involved. Vinny described how the guerrilla groups would come to the house of a poor farmer, such as himself, and offer them large sums of money to fight with them. Vinny declined, stating that he had his family to look after. This is one of the only justifications the guerrilla groups would accept for deciding not to fight, as many other reasons came with the pretense that the person was then loyal to the government. Although Vinny declined to fight with them, they would still come to his house and stay for periods of time, whether carrying out attacks or simply needing a rest stop. These aggressive moves by the guerrilla groups created unrest in society. The war was not being fought away from the people, and it was not be and it was not behind closed doors between the government and guerrillas. The fight had been brought to the civilian level. The people were involved if they wanted to be or not. Civilian rule returned in 1986 with the election of President Marco Benicio Cerezo Arevalo. December 29, 1996, a peace agreement was signed by four top leftist rebel leaders and government representatives. The war had left some 150,000 people dead, most of them civilians, and some 50,000 missing. Although, as Vinny talked about, the peace accords were signed and the guerrilla groups were disbanded, there remain aspects of the war and aspects of, tr- of the treaty unfulfilled. When he goes back to visit today, he still does not go to the village he lived in for fear of being recognized. 